Today we will start a new module. The title of the new module is Differential Analysis of Fluid Flow. Okay? And the first thing that I want to do about this differential module is very similar to the previous one where we covered conservation of mass, momentum and energy for the control volume principles. Okay? So this will be an alternative approach. The first thing that I want to do, similar to the previous approach, is start with the conservation of mass. Okay? Because this is the most simplest of the three that we will be covering. Okay? And what I want to do is I actually I would like to go ahead and refer from the conservation of mass for the control volume, the equation that we have derived. Okay? And here is what it's going to look like. V dotted with n dA is equal to zero. Okay? And in this case, if you remember what we did was, let's say that I have some kind of a band over here, right? And I picked a particular control volume and I, I take this entire area or rather the volume to be my control volume, right? And I did my analysis based on that. Right now, the approach that we're going to take is going to be slightly different where I'm going to shrink the control volume, okay? I'm going to shrink the control volume. And this will bring some advantages to me. The volume I want to highlight is going to be delta x times delta y times delta z if I'm using Cartesian coordinates. And my derivations will be based on Cartesian coordinates today. Okay. Um, now, if you remember from your other courses as well, when we have a dot in a tiny size, what we represented is, we represented it by a cube. Okay. Now, why am I doing this? What is the advantage of going through this process as opposed to the larger control volume? Well, I'll start with one of them, okay? As CV is small, I can simply go ahead and say that over this particular tiny control volume, the density is constant, okay? And this is applicable for both gases and liquids as well. The reason is that this control volume is tiny, so I'm saying that only at that particular dot, my control volume has the constant density, which is fairly reasonable. I'm not saying that the density is the same over here as well, or over here. I'm not making that assumption, okay? That should be highlighted. Okay, so let's see what this gives me, okay? And what I do is I'm going to look at these terms one by one. The first term that I have here, I'm going to analyze it separately. Then I'm going to go ahead and analyze the second term as well. And I'm going to sum them up the final answer that I get, and I should get is equal to zero. So let's start with the first term. Okay. The first term says that it is del del t control volume rho d volume. Okay. So when we look here, actually it's written right above here, Let's look at this particular term, the density term, what will happen to it. Well, I'm saying that the over the control volume density is constant, so I can simply take that out. So it's going to be del rho del t times triple integral over the control volume of d volume. Okay, let's take a step back and analyze this, okay, the triple integral dv component. Let's, take, let's say that if I have integral of dx, pretty much everybody knows that this is going to end up with an x, right? So now I'm going to approach in another angle. So I'm going to say dA. What is it is the question. And you can think that this dA, if I'm using Cartesian coordinates, d, dx d times dy. So that will be x times y, which is the area itself. Not that this is the same as that. This is the same as that as well. So from this approach, then triple integral of d volume will be the integral in the Cartesian of dx, dy, dz, which will end up with x times y times c, which is simply the volume, right? Okay, so then if I go up here, you can see that this, this becomes a volume. So then the first term basically becomes del rho del t times volume. This is my first term. Now it's time to analyze the second term in the continuity equation. The anal analyzation of the second term is much more complicated than the first term, okay? However, we will take an attempt to see how we can accomplish this, okay? So this is the second term from the conservation of mass equation, okay? What I want to do is actually I want to go back to my cube that I have here, okay? And I want to name 
um, different surfaces. The first surface that I want to name is the one and the zy that is intersecting with the zy axis. Okay, and I'm going to call this two. And this two is going to be at two bars when x is equal to delta x. Okay. Now, and at the center of the cube, right at the center over here, I'm going to say that this is rho, u, v, and w. So, is I need to transfer the properties or these densities and the velocities into the each phase. I need to transfer it to the phase number one. I need to transfer it to the phase number two. Okay, and that is only accomplished for the x direction. Okay, um, but the good thing is, as you will find out, that the equation is going to look symmetric. So I do not have to do the same analysis for the y direction and z directions. Okay, so let me go back to my equation in here. And if I look at the phase number one, this is an inlet, and I'm assuming that the velocity is this way, okay? And the numbers phase number one will be the inlet, and phase number two will be the exit, okay? So when I look at this draw dot v dot n, you will find out that in the phase number one, I will get rho times minus u, because it's an inlet, right? At one times dA, okay, plus this, this phase number two is going to be the section number two, rho, this will be a positive u, v dot n will be a positive u because it's an exit, times dA. I want to highlight that this is uh, at the two, okay? So then what I want to do now, assuming, and this is a fairly reasonable assumption because my volume is small, is I will take out this rho times u, outside integral, what I will obtain is this is going to be minus rho times u, okay? And this will be at the phase number one times a1, okay? Plus rho times u times a2, and this is the phase number two. What I'm going to do is I have to ablate these two things, okay? Area one and area two are fine. I can find them, okay? I know them because if you think about it, area one, if you go up here, area one is equal to over here, it's going to be delta z times delta y, right? So I can find my a1. Okay, so now I said at the beginning of this uh, analysis is the density, the velocities are at the center. So I have to transfer them to the uh, corresponding surfaces, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to transfer and I'm going to say that this is going to be rho times u, okay, at the phase number two. And I'm going to say that this is going to be the rate of change of rho u in the x direction, okay? Not, let me take a step back. Rho u is at the center of this cube, okay? I'm basically trans transferring this from the center of the cube to the phase number two, okay? And when I go from the center of the cube to the phase number two, I do travel in the x direction, okay? So those are important. So that's why I said the rho times u, which is at the center, plus, um, I'm assuming that going in the positive direction, I'm gonna increase that, okay? Um, del rho u, so basically what I'm doing is, I'm looking at the rate of change of rho u in the x direction, or this is like the slope of the line, right? And then I have to multiply this by the distance that I travel from the center of the cube to the phase number two. And you can see that this is gonna be delta x over two, right? So let me do the same analysis for phase number one. Then you will see that it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be rho u. This time around, I'm going in the negative x direction, so it's gonna be the rate of change of rho u in the x directions times the distance that I travel from the center to the phase number one, and that will still be delta x over two, okay? So now, as I establish this, I will go back to my equation and I will simply insert them, okay? Rho u at one from the figure that we have, let's not forget the negative sign in front of it, rho u will be rho u minus delta rho u, del rho u del x times delta x over two, okay? So this will, this will be my rho u at phase number one times the area one. As we discussed, area one will be delta y, delta z, okay? 
Let's do the same analysis for the face number two. So this will be a positive sign now. Okay. It's going to be rho u. This time it's going to be plus the rate of change of rho u in the x direction times the distance that I traveled between those two times the area is the same. Area one is equal to area two. Okay. So now let's look at this equation and try to analyze. So the first term has a negative in front of it. And this has a positive intro front of it, right? So when I look at the first terms, rho u times delta y delta z, and I have here a rho u times delta y delta z. First time has first one has a negative in front of it, the second one has a positive in front of it. So what I'm gonna say is that these two will cancel each other. Okay? And if I write if I go ahead and write this, then the first term becomes there's a minus here and there's another minus here, so that will be a positive value. It's going to be the rate of change of rho u in the x direction times delta x over 2 and delta y delta z. And if I look at the second term, I will get del rho u del x times delta x by 2 delta y delta z. Note that these two terms are exactly the same. There's no difference between those two. So they are equal to each other. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write one of them and multiply by two. Two times del rho u del x times delta x over two times delta y delta z. So you can see the twos cancel and I got myself del rho u del x times delta y, delta y, delta x, delta y, delta z. What is the multiplication of delta x, delta y, delta z? That is the volume. Okay. So now, this is an important equation now. If I look at the same thing in the y direction, okay, in the y direction, what I will obtain is, well, del rho is, doesn't change. U is the velocity in the x, so this is going to be del rho v, del y times volume. This will be in the y direction. Obviously, you can go ahead and uh, replicate this process that we've gone through, but you will obtain this, okay? And the third in the z direction is going to be del rho w del z times the volume, and this will be in the z direction, okay? Now, basically, let's also box these two up as well. These are as important as the first equation that we have, okay? So the second term, the analysis started over here, and the second term turns out to be the summation of these three boxes, okay? And I also, if I go back up here, I also obtain the first term as this box stop. So why don't I sum up all these four box stop equations and equate to zero? Del rho, del t times the volume, okay? Plus del rho u del x times the volume plus del rho v del y times the volume plus del rho w del z times the volume is equal to zero. So this, these three terms are the second term. This is the first term, okay? So I can do one more simplification before I box up equation and call today, and that each term is multiplied by volume, right? So I'm going to take everything with by volume parentheses, and you will get del rho del t plus del rho u del x plus del rho v del y plus del rho w del z is equal to zero, okay? So basically, I obtain a case where I'm multiplying two parameters and I'm obtaining a zero at the end of the day. A is this, B is this whole parentheses. I can have volume zero, but that doesn't quite make sense because I know that it's a finite. Although it's small, it is a finite value. So this means that then the second, this parentheses must be zero.